Hi, my name is Michael Towers, and I'm back with part three of this four-part video series. Today, I want to invite you to think about boundaries a bit differently. I'm inviting you to think about boundaries from a non-pathologizing approach. In part two of this video series, I introduce you to my formula, a formula rooted in the differentiated self, and I'll start there to set up our conversation today. As you recall from part two video with the formula, it started with control. And when you had control, you felt safe. And when you felt safe, you chose vulnerability. And when you chose vulnerability, hope emerged and healing began. And then in part two, I focused on external control mechanisms. And this is where I want to spring off of in our conversation today, more in depth with this idea around control. And so control, recognizing that that formula was about the process of becoming differentiated. And so the process of having control comes from answering those two questions. Who are you and how do you want to be known? And as you continue to grow in your differentiation, the understanding of self, then you'll experience power and strength in your voice and out of that differentiated self will spring forth boundaries. The next step after those natural boundaries emerge is this idea that I've called respecting your no. And that comes with the presupposition that no one else will. And eventually, what this all will lead to is a place where you won't care what other people think about you. And so let's take a closer look at what I mean by boundaries to be able to frame up our conversation for today. So boundaries are those personal limitations that when crossed, one feels out of control and not safe. And we pathologize boundaries based off of societal constructed narratives around behavioral expectations. We notice how people interact with other people and we make a judgment such as they have poor boundaries. We invite people to reflect on our statements and summaries of their behavior. You have unhealthy boundaries, we may say. Or our clients show up with this pathology already. And out of the medical model, we apply a symptom-based approach in helping the client. Normally, this shows up as working with them on self-esteem, how to be assertive, how to communicate more effectively, and even self-compassion are all interventions that clinicians will use when working with someone expressing the presenting problem of poor or unhealthy boundaries. But let's pause here for a moment and apply some critical thinking and some feminist theory. We also need to understand a bit of history of the medical model through the patriarchal structures that dominate our society. Psychology can be traced back to the early diagnosis of a woman who was experiencing some hard emotions, and that diagnosis was called hysteria. In fact, it was up until the 1950s that women experiencing hard emotions were still being prescribed narcotics and barbiturates, and the diagnosis then was called unmanageable emotional outbursts. So on top of women's health still sorely lagging behind men's health, there is also this dominating socially constructed narrative that a female is responsible for tending to the relationships in their life. Although what I'm going to say about boundaries applies to all genders, it was important to provide a bit of historical context to understand why therapists treat presenting problems related to boundaries in these pathologizing ways. So a client shows up and either self-identifies that they have poor boundaries or the therapist makes this assessment. The most common intervention then will be based on communication. And here I want to have us pause and employ critical thinking again. Because what we are in fact doing is inviting the client to take responsibility for another person's actions and behaviors. This is weird for me because we cannot change another person, 
We are only responsible for our own actions and behaviors. So why are we setting up our clients for failure, for pathology? Here is the critical statement I'm inviting the audience to walk away with. It is enough that you are aware of your boundaries. You don't ever have to communicate them. You aren't responsible to convince others to understand or respect them. You never need to remind others of your boundaries. What you do need to practice is how to respect your no. And that, again, is based on my presupposition that others in your life won't. This requires you being focused on how you are creating safety for yourself through control. Now, unfortunately, our profession has found a way to person who respects their no. They have pathologized the client through the description of a brick boundary person, meaning it is easy to say no, but not so easy to say yes. And again, we have these imposed behavioral expectations around how you ought to be and how you ought to show up in a relationship. Instead of realizing that boundaries are directly connected to safety, and so perhaps the reason someone is saying no all the time is that they don't feel safe in some aspect of their relationship. The takeaway here is that it is enough that you have boundaries. You never need to explain or justify them, and you never need to convince or remind others of them. And so let me try to weave all of this together for you. Again, in the second part of this video series, when I was talking about this differentiation formula, the emphasis was on this idea of control to create safety. And the only things in that formula you needed to do was to have control and then choose to be vulnerable. Safety is this pivotal point that I want us to focus on and the correlation of control to safety. And in part two, I spoke about the external control mechanisms. And so today, out of control comes this idea of boundaries. And boundaries is an expression of our differentiated self. Here's where I'm going to have a play on words for you. And the idea here being is that I'm going to invite you to be selfish. And what I mean when I say selfish is I want you to be self-reflective. What are your needs? And I'm going to invite you to be self-aware. What are your feelings? What are the emotions? Are you languaging those unlanguaged experiences in your life? I'm going to invite you to practice self-care, activating the pleasure chemicals of the brain, commonly referred to as dose, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. And I'm inviting you to do all of these things so the best version of yourself is available for others. You see, out of the differentiated self, the more you get to know who you are, boundaries will flow naturally. You'll know what your own limitations are in every system that you're connected to. And here's where I want to separate from the pathologizing idea of boundaries, is that it is enough that you know what those boundaries are. You are not now shouldered with the responsibility to go and communicate those boundaries to everyone around you and every system you are connected to. It is enough that you know them. And so then the invitation here is for you to respect your no, meaning that as you show up in every one of the systems and you're aware of the boundaries, as soon as the boundary is crossed, this isn't a pause for you to sit that person down and have a conversation with them and to try to convince them that your boundaries are worthwhile, that your boundaries are important, and that they should come on board with following those boundaries. These are the typical interventions that we implement when working with our clients. But instead, your respecting of your no just requires action on your part. And the action might be that you remove yourself from these situations. You may find that you're a part of some systems where your boundaries have now grown to be incompatible with those around you, and it might be time for you to make some changes in your life. These are all things for you to do, not to communicate and try to convince everyone around you that what you are experiencing as a boundary is somehow okay. It is okay. It's enough that you have it, and that's the message I want you to take away from uh, this conversation here today. Thank you.